Hello friends, welcome again to Medica Cardio Talks 20. We are busy all in our day's work, either in the cat lab or in the operating theatre, but I think we have to take time off and discuss the very interesting facets of research, of academic findings, of studies and trials that hits our eyes. Perhaps this is the best possible way that, keep, that we keep ourselves updated and attuned to what's happening around us. You know, if memory serves me right, if the year was somewhere around 1941 and the US President Franklin Delano Roosevelt suddenly dies, and that is perhaps one of the first recorded cases of a head of state dying out of an acute myocardial infarction when the entire American establishment stood back and watched and could not do anything about it. It was Roosevelt's death that triggered a lot of research into the etiology, the causes of acute coronary problems or rather coronary problems in general. And one of the, one of the derivatives of post Roosevelt phenomenon were studies like the Framingham trial and the other trials that gave us insight into the etiology of what causes the coronary problems. History apart, we've all been absolutely and deeply invested into the control of the lipid profile. The lipid profile and its association with the risk factors but as we have been absolutely serious about managing that, certain facets have come to our notice, which probably is a little bit disturbing, but more than being disturbed, I think we need clarity on the subject regarding aggressive treatment, especially with drugs like Evolutumab, which is being used many a times in people with deranged lipid profile. And with me this afternoon is somebody you know only too well, Dr. Dilip Kumar. And I will seek Dilip's opinion that we, that you know, two of us have been chatting about this for a while. And he enlightened me as to what has been slightly controversial angle on the subject. So Dilip, the floor is yours to explain to us. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, with this pretext, uh, what sir has given us, a little on philosophical note, this is not a time to cruise, be it in scientific research, be it in economical front, everything which we see. And that's what uh, has happened. Uh, maybe it was a lack of clarity, lack of the data which was given to, uh, you know, particular researchers. So we have been using uh, Evolucumab, that, uh, that is a costly drug in those patients who, had, who have a deranged uh, lipid profile, uh, even the uh, maximum dose of statins, the drugs, the LDL is not below the target, then we use this drug. And this has to continue and uh, this poses a huge economical burden on patient relatives. And till now, more, roughly around 1.7 million patients have been given this drug. And now there is a, you know, a, a, something has surfaced which is, challenge, which is challenging the uh, basic uh, study and fundamentals on which uh, the study is being approved. And that study was Fourier trial, which was published in 2017 in NEJM, which showed a significant reduction in uh, uh, primary endpoints of uh, cardiovascular death, MI stroke, and uh, admission with the uh, with the ACS or revascularization, pulmonary revascularization. And they, what they found was basically this was this is a VIAT initiative that is uh, restoring uh, the invisible and abandoned trials. They they seek to uh, reduce the bias in research reporting, and uh, they got some. Uh, they got the entire data, CSR data. They couldn't get the entire regulatory data. The CSR data on mortality, uh, they found that it was uh, enough uh, described there, and the CSR the clinical study report was two forty-five thousand page report, huge report, and uh, they found that uh, the, uh, the the deaths uh, which were there total of 870 deaths, 360 deaths uh, where, uh, you know, the etiology were different. The primary investigator reported some different mode of death and the, 
committee, the clerical committee which adjudicated this death, they found it different. And there was a re-adjudication team was, you know, uh, brought in place. There was a validation committee brought in place. And they gave us, they gave another report which showed that 26% discrepancy between the adjudicated reports and re-adjudicated reports. And they found 11 deaths were higher, like cardiac deaths were higher in uh, Evalucumab uh, you know, group and three cardiac deaths were not there as cardiac deaths in placebo group. So uh, what they summarized was the, uh, the deaths reported, cardiovascular death, the relative risk which was 5% uh, higher now rose to 25% higher than the placebo. So this, this discrepancy from 5% to 25% uh, you know, uh, increase in cardiovascular death uh, is what they found from the data which is available to them. So this is the basically... So the passage, that, that clarifies a lot of things. But having said that, you know, two questions. Since I have not perhaps been following this uh, in, in great depth and detail, is A, my question would be, that has, has this made its way into the guidelines? Yes. It has. Yes. And then, as a clinician, once you... Uh, read through what's going on around us. How have you strategized this? Uh, yes, on practical note, I must tell we have evidence from other trials as well. So not only there is a Fourier trial, we have evidence on uh, from Odyssey trial where uh, PCSK9 inhibitors they have shown to be safer. Uh, but still, uh, the uh, committee and the, uh, the the team, the React team, is now uh, you know voicing for re-adjudication of even Odyssey trial data. So never know uh, what is going to happen tomorrow with this all set of uh, data which is there, how they are presented, but it has given me a serious, serious shed of doubt. And that's uh, my, uh, you know, confidence is a little shaken up. So I will move yeah, perhaps, forward. You know, perhaps the idea is not to be uh, cynical or negative, but I think it is also important because you see, not very long ago, uh, there was like the Cochrane collaboration, uh, the Cochrane Foundation, you know, they, they, they are a little bit of suspicious group who said that pharmaceutically powered studies, you know, which probably have overtly or covertly a lot of pharmaceutical investment and interest in them, somehow these problems surface with these things more than others. So, I mean, we don't know. I think perhaps it is fair to say the jury is out on this subject. But what would you want uh, the youngsters and the clinicians listening to you to do? What should be their clinical practice, a safe clinical practice as it stands today? Right, sir. So uh, coming from my practice, what uh, I have seen uh, all through these three, four years, I have used uh, Evalocumab in uh, more than 50 patients and most of them, majority of them are doing well. So uh, we, uh, it does give us an uh, insight to look into the, uh, you know, correct data and uh, for more transparency. But uh, with registry data available, with our experience available, other trials available, it is not a time to panic. And uh, so a more stringent, uh, you know, uh, control on using these drugs maybe is advised. Not for going on, especially in off-level cases, we shouldn't be going at all. I think that's a fair comment. Thank you very much. Thanks.